What's going on, folks? Welcome to a brand new episode, exciting episode of Smoke Em If You Got Em, the world's most interactive music podcast, the best music journal out there. Uh, the premise of the show is uh, pretty simple. We listen to a record, side A, side B, we talk about it. But before we get down to that business, you're going to have two numbers rolled because we're going to smoke one, we're going to listen to side A, we're going to flip that record over and smoke another one. Easy enough, right? The point is to take you away and listen to some good-ass music that you had never heard before. Uh, so come and join us in this journey and to take this journey. And for the record of choice, I pass the microphone over to the Oracle of Oxford County, Mr. Jeremiah Charlton. What up? Ladies and gentlemen, today we will listen to This Heat, Deceit. Name of the band is This Heat? Nope. The name of the record is Deceit. Correct. And uh, that's 1981. Uh, folks, a note early on, this record, you're not going to find it on streaming services because this band has held on to it. And uh, supposedly August 20th, 2020, they released their music digitally. But in the meantime, do your search and you'll find it. Deceit is the name of the album. This Heat is the name of the band. Correct. So... I love this album. Uh, I had to buy it as soon as I saw the album cover years ago. And uh, I hope people enjoy the journey we go on today. I'm going to be really honest with you. I don't care if they enjoy it. I love this album, so I'm ready to do it. Let's do it. Oh, you listen to Smoke and Baby Got Him. This might be one of the sweetest releases we've heard. So far, season two on fire, by the way. We're listening to Deceit by the band Dis Heat. September, September 81 is the release date of this. I absolutely love this cacophony of sound coming at you strong and hard out of the UK. Had you ever heard this album before? I had heard this album before. This band is a very important band, so I picked up these two records. Uh, the two that they put out. Um, this is my favorite one of the two. Okay, I've had <clears throat> I've had this album for on record for maybe um, three years. Talk to me about it. And uh, I saw it just from some some guys like uh, recommended from YouTube that I watch, and so that's hit me to that. And and then I uh, wasn't really prepared for it because it's a strange band. It's eighty one. I mean, it's obviously post punk. Yeah, but it's so much more than like a band, like whatever magazine or something like that, you know. Which is good too. I'm yeah, saying. yeah. If you if you have to put this band somewhere, it would be easy to put it in the post punk. If you have to put a genre, but it it, it it just encompasses so damn much. Yeah, it's all over the place. It, it to me, it's more. It's closer to um, like rock rock and opposition. It lives really comfortably in the RIO music. And now we got to note that this band is a duo. Um, they get down super hard. There's additional people playing, but this heat, the core of it is, is the two players. And uh, it's, um, it's, it's improvised, uh, aggressive sounding music. And to me, this side, A, um, considering what this record turns into, this side, A, feels way more energy improvise live um you know figuring out as you know they hit play record and they just went for it my um, my favorite track is spqr spqr that's track number four on this my paper hats got me yep um pa- paper hearts paper hats uh, got me and but again the whole site was really cool and fresh 81, like you're saying, it's supposed to be post-punk, and it's got that punk aggression, but it's got free jazz in there, too. You know? The SPQR is the one that has really crazy drums, though. Yeah. Over the top, really fast on the hi-hat. And it even has and it even has uh, some really interesting, like, almost dub moments. You know, the, the, thing, about, the thing about this heat is it incorporates uh, tape mani- uh, manipulation. It, it incorporates... Uh, experimental audio and uh, when you listen for the first time you know if you're not a punk music player or a listener you're like well this is just a bunch of punk guys but when you pay attention to the shit that's underneath 
yeah, there is some crazy stuff that's happening with the hi hat and the drum patterns, as you're saying, constantly. And uh, and the guitar is the guitar and the rest of the accompaniment has some really interesting voicings for it. You know, not your usual music for September '81. Uh, strange vocals too, very strange. Yeah, they almost feel like they don't forced in there. Sort of it's like just, uh, Ian Curtis influenced. That's a great call, by the way. It's very much uh, Joy Division. Very much Joy Division. But weirder. Now, <laughs> yeah, sleep, yeah. If, sleep. if you if you could uh, if you could uh, paint a picture of the artwork for this album. Oh, it's so cool! Like, like that's why I, this is one of my favorite albums that I have in terms of uh, album covers. Nice, you know, like because it's so iconic and it's so clean and it really sticks out on the vinyl. It's like a, it's like a demented hockey mask mouth, you know, like collage. Oh, it's great! It does look like a hockey mask. Yeah, it's great. I love it. Demented hockey mask. Uh, well, you know, if you're joining us right now and listening to this heat. The album is Deceit, September 81, out on uh, Rough Trade, a great label for uh, cool music. Uh, but we got to flip over. We got to flip over. Dude, it's time, folks. Let him know. You got to smoke another one. You got to. You just got to do it. It's the weekend. There's no excuses. Hey, I'm lighting my pipe right now. Let him know. That's right. So, everyone else, join the journey. Let's go on side two, folks. <laughs> I think the B side is my favorite fucking side on this album. Nice. The B side gets me. We're listening to This Heat. The record is Deceit, September 81. Very influential, I would call it, right? What, what would you call them? You would call it influential? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I would call them influential because this side to me, uh, you know, we're. It's it's been it's been thirty years since this album was made, and I've heard a lot of bands that uh, that remind years, me of this. That forty, forty years. Um, <clears throat> I said over thirty. Um, it reminds me a lot of Larry Seven. It reminds me a lot of Psychic TV. It reminds me a lot of the Sonic Youth light stuff. Like, there's a lot of bands that have pushed forward this idea in what this band did in just the two albums. So I think they are super influential. But this record in particular. The seat like really stands out there. Like it's it's like, it's uh, pretty heavy. Makeshift Swahili. Yo, makeshift Swahili and independence on the side B. Yes, yeah. going back to back. Correct. Incredible. Makeshift Swahili might be the blueprint for the band Ministry. Um, I, uh, yeah, no, I this is. This is aggression at its finest, uh, but but it, it wants you to be part of it. It doesn't want to fight you. It's cool. Oh, it's great. <clears throat> Vocals, again, very strange, very abrasive, without screaming, too, which is cool. Uh, yeah, that understated, the understated uh, energy. And, and the angst is creepy as fuck, but it works. Yeah, I dig it. So this is uh, one of my favorite drummers, Charles Hayward. He played with the Quiet Sun. He, he goes on and does his own thing later on to Camberwell Now, one of the best bands of the eighties. Yeah. So yeah, Hayward he, Hayward is a serious, serious player. He's been around for a long time, and uh, you know, played with Manzanera and like all them guys. But he's always been uh, he's always been at the top of the pyramid of uh, weird. Uh, yes, know, progressive music. You know, he's like he's that's like, what uh, we talk about here. He, to me, he's like uh, a precursor of like Lightning Bolt's drummer. Oh, that's a great man! Shout out to Lightning Bolt because that's that's legit. See, Lightning Bolt wouldn't happen without this heat. That's what I'm saying. And he's sort of like um, I can tell, like Vander definitely influenced him from Magma, Christian Vander. Yeah. Which which uh, rules looms large over these waters over here. So he's like so one of the great one of the greats. Yeah. So uh, so in jest here, I mean, Rough Trade puts out a great album. Uh, there's only two of uh, 
studio albums for this band. This is the most recognized one. What's the going price for it out there right now? You can get an original copy, like, uh, um, I would say around 75 bucks US, so not horrible. There are a lot of like those represses, right? So I have a repress, but um, it, and it's good. It's a good quality. It's I, No complaints. And there's tw- 20 represses, so. There's 20 represses, and uh, Recommended Records uh, released a remastered version of Deceit, right, uh, as a box set, and uh, six CDs. It's called uh, Out of Cold Storage Box Set, and six CDs because this album was recorded between 1977 and 1991, right? So they put together their top 11 tracks, but it took years to uh, build and uh, so, you know, it's even though it's improvised and even though it's like it's happening right there at the moment, uh, it has uh, it has good intentions. You know, it's well thought out. Oh, yeah. So uh, it gets your seal of approval. Oh, this record, uh, you know, please do yourself a favor and get it for yourself. Um, I'm going to try to find myself that six CD box because I'm sick. Of course, you want the want, this. This band has really cool outtakes. Oh, this this band has everything. This this band was uh, cool enough to uh, when they did their John Peel sessions, they allowed for it to uh, come out, and uh, they call it made available. So the band allowed a John. Peel. Well, you know, John Peel's a huge thing. John Peel's a great. Uh, you know, he covered the airways for years and years and years, making and breaking like influential artists in BBC history. And they were just like, well, that doesn't mean anything to us. We're going to make some tracks available to you. You can put them out and whatever. It's cool, man. <laughs> Love these guys. Well, folks, uh, tomorrow, where are we going, G? We're going someplace strange, I think. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow we're going for Korea. Like, what type of challenge is this, folks? Like, I know I'm the Oracle of Oxford County, but I, b- I believe in you. I think you can. Uh, I think you can pull uh, a hard one here because uh, you know I was thinking about uh, we've about places that we haven't yet to cover um, that I thought might have interesting music around this era. So why not Korea? And if anybody can find the record, that would well, be the. I'm going to tell you guys record. right now as a heads up. There's not much progressive rock at all in the history of Korea. No less good progressive rock. So, I mean, I didn't say it was going to be easy. No, no. So, folks, uh, you know, light one up big tomorrow, please, because I will. will, Man, I'm in trouble. Yeah, we're going to go for it. All right, you listen to Smoke and We Got Him. Catch you tomorrow. Tomorrow, folks.